what's up divas and what's up divos it's of course wednesday and you're back with your girl april so it is time for real talk wednesdays as i do every wednesday and before we even get into this video for those of you want to know about the hair that i'm actually rocking i cannot remember for the life of me where the hair came from i know it was from ally express but i'm not really sure of the vendor I have to edit the video and I will let you know but it's just um, four bundles of their loose wave and it's a U part they didn't send me a closure you know how I get when I don't get a closure like one of my last videos I was like I don't have a closure where's the closure well I knew I wasn't getting a closure with this one and I was fine with it because I wanted a U part and it's really long um, I really like it I colored the bottoms of it so it's a really pretty color and I kind of um, wand curled it um, with the twists to give it like this water waves so I actually have this sewn onto my head and I've had it sewn onto my head since a Thursday evening um, the day before I had to go pick up my so-called um, husband well he's not my so-called uh, my, my fiance my my boo from the airport because he was coming home so that is what I did Friday that's why you didn't see no videos Saturday Sunday and Monday um, and I sewed it on my head but yeah so if you have a real talk that you are in need of make sure you go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com and please put in the subject line real talk so that way I know that it is official real talk and today I'm going to try to do three because I have three already picked out as long as I don't overheat from the lights and from my drink so today I have a delicious drink and it is in a Krispy Kreme Donuts cup. I love this cup because it keeps your drink cold so the ice is always in there. But I can put more in it. So this is the pineapple upside down cake drink. Which is cake Smirnoff cake vodka. Cake flavored vodka. Pineapple juice. Um, and grenadine syrup. And you just need a tad, tiny, tiny bit of grenadine syrup. And that is what I have going on today. I love these. I will drink these like at 11.30 in the morning. Because I don't put so much. And the alcohol content of the Smirnoff Cake Vodka is only 30%. So it isn't as strong as like the other vodkas. So, yes, I love the Smirnoff Vodkas. So, and I sound like an alcoholic right about now, right? <laughs> so let's get into this real talk. Hey April, you can call me Tina. Long story short, I'm 25 years old and I have recently separated from my husband because he is a liar and very untrustworthy. We have only been married two years and have a 10 month old daughter and I have a four year old son from a previous relationship. The problem is I started talking to this other guy. This guy is somebody I used to date in my past. I really liked this guy back then but I guess we just drifted away. Now that we've connected again, he is even more sexier and is still the sweetheart I remember. Do you think it is too early to already be talking to somebody else less than a week after I separated from my husband? I feel guilty, but I feel like if my husband wasn't treating me right, then why should I? What is your opinion? Thank you, Tina. Well, mm, first of all, so Tina is separated from her husband. And they've only been married two years. They have a 10-month-old child together. Tina also has a four four-year-old child from a previous relationship she also has gotten back in touch with her ex who she used to date many many years ago and he is still sexier than ever and still the sweetheart so she has feelings so she wants to know is it too soon to date someone after she's been separated from her husband for more than a year I mean excuse me for more than a week a little bit less than a week so she's been separated from her husband a week and she wants to know if it's wrong to date someone that she has had a relationship with in the past and also her husband is a cheating, well she didn't say cheating, but he's a liar and untrustworthy. So first of all, Tina, now you know my situation. I was separated from my husband, but now I'm divorced. And while I got separated, I was with my ex that I used to date many years ago. And we have a kid together who's 17 now. So it's the same situation, Tina, me and you have here, except for I got divorced. You're still married. But I was still doing this while I was married, but we were separated, okay? 
Um, how, but same situation. This is my ex. Like, he's your ex. And we got back together. And so forth and so forth. And we started dating. So now we live together. We live together. And I'm fine with that because I've already known him. Now, I would say that it might have been too early if you really didn't know the person. Like, you know what I'm saying? It was like... I'm not going to say he was a stranger, but you know what I'm saying. Like, somebody you just met. So, you really don't know him like that. So, I would probably say that it may be too soon. But then again, who's to say that love is too soon or too late? Now, here's the thing. You and your husband's been separated physically. Physically for a week. Mentally, you guys have been separated longer than that. So, physically and mentally are two different things. And I'm not making up excuses for you so that you can feel good about what you're doing. But what I'm telling you is physical and mental is two different things. So, while I was living with my ex-husband, I was separated from him too. Mentally, in my mind, I was gone a long time. 2013, we separated because he went to jail in January 2013. I was separated from him probably of 2010 that's when my mind was separated from him because you know I had he was he was a liar and he was untrustworthy too so being separated mentally and physically are two different things you've been separated from him and he's been separated from you mentally and I know this for a fact because if that wasn't the case you guys would have never separated physically so you've already been separated mentally it's just that sometimes things take a take a little time and take a little bit of time for you to get the bowl roll meaning to get out of the situation and move out of the home or him leave the home and vice versa and do what you need to do so physically yeah it's a week but mentally no it's more than a week so do I feel like it's too soon no I don't because first of all if you were treated the right way properly like a woman should be treated you wouldn't have to be emailing me this bullshit talking about well is it too soon if your husband was supposed to do what he was supposed to do you wouldn't have been emailing this shit to me now i'm not really sure about the stuff that he lies about but and he's untrustworthy about but it must be a big deal if you left him alone and separated him and want to leave him alone um he ain't lying about who left the toilet seat up not me no it wasn't me i i didn't leave shit up mm -mm, not me i I, I pee sitting down. Mm -hmm. That's He didn't lie about that. Honest, obviously, he lied about something that was really, really drastic or had a lot of meaning behind it. So that's the reason for the separation. And the untru untrustworthy seems like the lying and the trustworthy kind of are entwining together. And it's got me thinking like, oh, this fool is probably cheating and talking to the next bitch. That's just what I'm feeling because you said untrustworthy and lie and he's a liar. If he lies about one thing, he could probably lie about a whole bunch of shit, and you would never know. But, no, I don't think that it's too soon. Here's the here's the thing. First of all, we need to stop going around and worried about what everybody else fucking thinks in this world, about what the fuck we be doing, and how we be doing it, and who we be doing it with, okay? Now, here I'm going to tell you guys, just like this. Do y'all really think I give a shit if y'all fucking this nigga, and then the next day y'all going to fuck somebody else's man? I don't care. That's y'all business. As long as you don't try to step to mine, we cool. The minute you try to step to mine, then it's a problem. However, if you want to fuck whoever you want to fuck with, that's your business. Stop trying to please everybody in this world because I've been in there, done that, and it's not worth it sometimes. You please everybody else but yourself. Stop worrying about what other people think about you. Do you really think that I give a fuck about what anybody thinks about me? I mean, yeah, I do give a fuck, okay? But I don't give a fuck to where it's like, oh my god, I'm gonna lose some sleep over it. Because if somebody don't like me on YouTube, I could care two shits. If you don't like me, I don't give a fuck. I don't like your ass neither. First of all, you don't even know me to dislike me. You don't know me like that to dislike me. You might not like my videos, and if you don't like my videos, so what? I don't give a fuck. I don't care if you don't like my videos. Shit. And so what? Go kick rocks with no shoes and socks on to your feet blister up. I don't give a fuck if you don't like me or not. So, Tina, stop worrying about what other people think. If you feel it's right and this is what you want and you're happy, then do what the fuck makes Tina happy. You've been miserable long enough and it might have only been two years of marriage, but that shit seemed like a lifetime when your ass is miserable. Trust me, I know that. Don't want to go there, but I do know this. That a lifetime of misery could seem or could feel like a lifetime of misery if, if, if it's a year. If you're in a relationship with somebody and you're unhappy for a year, that shit could feel like a lifetime of misery. For real. So I wouldn't even care or give two fucks about what anybody thought about me. Just like with my whole divorce situation. And now you see me on Instagram with my man. Oh yeah, I'm here. We live together now. 
Okay, some people, you know, like, I've gotten little comments, oh, I shouldn't have got the divorce. Bitch, you shouldn't have listened to the fucking video, okay? I don't give a fuck about how you feel. You weren't living in my house. You don't know what the fuck I was going through with that fucking man. I'm happy now. You think that I really give a shit about what anybody has to say with me about who I'm with or who I went back with or, oh, you and such and such are back together. Oh, wow, you didn't give your marriage no time. The divorce was over just that quick. Yeah, bitch, I was fucking him and being and dating him before the fucking divorce was final so what's new okay really what's new i didn't even wait for the final results from the divorce i've been was doing this nigga right here who i'm with now and i really don't give a fuck about what you think or what you think or what your mama think it's all about how i feel and if i'm happy and if you don't like it oh well so what you know what i'm saying Life is too short to be pleasing everybody. Make yourself fucking happy. And don't worry about the time and how long or how fast it is. Shit, some bitches get married the same day they meet a nigga. And then what? Some of them end up in total bliss. And some of them end up in the grave. You know what I'm saying? It all depends on how you feel and what you want to do. So to me, no. I don't really think that is too soon. You already was separated physically. Uh, excuse me. You was already separated mentally. So why not make yourself happy? And if your husband don't like it, then you know what? That's not your problem. You didn't like the lying and the untrustworthy. So now he doesn't like the fact that you've become happy with yourself and who you are and someone else is treating you like a lady. They always seem to get that way when somebody else is treating their wives or ex-wives or ex-girlfriends like a lady. Men seem to get real intimidated by that. But here's the thing, you wouldn't have to feel intimidated or a lesser of a person if you would have just been doing your job right. And this goes for male or female. Women get intimidated too by the next bitch, but you know what? You don't have to be intimidated by me because you should have been doing what you should have been doing. You know, And that's just how it goes. Plain and simple. So make yourself happy and do you and continue to enjoy your relationship with this rekindled love because that's exactly what it is it's rekindled love and you guys already know each other and now you're getting to know each other a little bit more and girl it helps a whole lot more when they a lot more sexy than the last time and that i could totally feel you on because so my i'm just gonna call him my husband because he always calls me his wife and i do call him my husband so his name is mel jamel but we call him mel so mel when we first was together, you know, we was young. The reason our 20s, very, very, very early 20s. 21 to like 24, something like that. So, or 20 to 24. So, we was, we was really young. And so, he was thinner. And so, when he came, um, the last picture that you guys seen of me and him, um, what was that, in like April? He was small. And then when he came home on Friday, he was bigger. He was he was bigger and he just was looking so sexy like <sighs> where were you all my life like seriously this is how I be thinking like damn looking at you at the airport you look mighty tasty okay all right so yes I can feel you on that Tina because mine's I say the same thing you look much sexier than a long time ago when we first was together so and he's even sweeter now. So I don't know. I say go for it and enjoy your life. And as long as he treats you right, then you have no worries. And you don't have to worry about what anybody else thinks. Life is too short, so enjoy it while you can, girl. Enjoy it. Okay, so the next one. All right. So let's see. Hey there, Miss Lady, as I should start off by saying I love your channel, and this real talk is the shit. Let me change my name to Paige, okay? I'm a single mother of three, and I have a male friend that helps me out at times, which he should be, um, which he should, because he's supposed to be my daughter's godfather. Well, I know he is interested in me, but I don't feel the same. Let me break it down real quick. It, break it down real quick. It got to the point where... He kept asking me for the cookies. You know, the cookies. The, the two cheese. So, damn, I gave it up. Child, and it was bad. I was even drunk on New Year's. A long story short, he keeps on asking for it again. And I'm like, no, I'm just not interested in that at this point in my life. He just keeps on trying. Not to mention he is cheap. Well, too cheap for my standards, but we are good friends besides him wanting me. 
What do I do? I don't want to fuck up our friendship. Oh, yeah, let me remind you. I have already told him I don't think we should have sex again. Thanks, Paige. Okay, so Paige. First of all, Paige is a single mother of three. Her One of her children's godfather is interested in her. He's been hinting on to her, hitting her and hitting at her. You know, hinting and hinting like, you know, he want to get with her. And talking about the cookies, the pussy. And so she finally gave it up to him, but it was not worth her time, basically. She said it was bad. I don't know if she meant bad as in little or bad as in he just couldn't use it. But even if, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. But um, she don't want to ruin their friendship and he keeps asking for the cookies. And she's like, she's not interested in that part of her life. And what should she do? Well, okay, so Paige, this is what you do, okay? Because this happened to me, um, yeah, this happened to me a couple years ago, and I will tell you this, um, this was when I first moved out here, and I was dating this guy for, like, a couple of months, and we was dating for a couple of months before I gave him any, ooh, what a mistake, so, you know, but he's way younger than me, he wasn't way younger than me, I'm 40, I was 40 at the time, 39, and, 39, and he was 28. 28 okay so yeah I said 11 years difference okay but anyway so we were dating for a couple of months and so finally I gave it up because he kept like hinting oh, first of all it is so not fun to have to fake an orgasm or fake a pleasure when you're having sex with somebody you know what I'm saying like you don't you don't want to feel like you have to do that with someone but it's not really cool to have to do that, but then again, at the same time, you don't want to hurt their feelings while they're in the midst of doing it. And then again, it's like, I don't really give a shit if I, don't hurt, if I hurt your feelings like that about you. You don't know how to fuck with your little ass dick. Like, what it is, what it is. You can't fuck. You got a little ass dick, and what you supposed to do with that? What am I supposed to do with that? But, you know, I was kind about it in the beginning, and I was like, you know, playing it off like it was like one of the greatest things that I did all day, okay? And then... He kept, getting, you know, later on down the line, kept, you know, giving me hints about, oh, it was so good. It was so good. I was like, yeah, you know, that's nice. I wasn't going to lie to him and say, oh, yeah, you was good too because I wouldn't do that. So he kept saying, oh, he can do this and he going to do this to me. And I got kind of offended by it. I got really offended by it because stop talking to me about sex. And then stop talking to me about sex that you think you can do with nigga. You can't do shit. Maybe them bitches that you used to fuck with told you you was worthy. But I'm not that bitch. So anyway, he kept talking about, well, oh, what I'm going to do to you. And you know what? I said to him, listen, first of all, you got a little ass dick, okay? And you can't fuck. And he was like, what? What did you say? We were on the phone. We were talking, conversing. Now, no text. We was talking. And I was like, you heard me. You got a little ass dick and you can't fuck, okay? You can't even eat pussy right. So please stop telling me about what you want to do. Better yet, don't call me no more. And then I hung up. So, it got to me because he kept talking about, oh, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. You know, talking all of that shit. Like, you, please. You couldn't even keep it in because it was too short. So how the fuck is you going to do anything to me? You're going to give yourself a heart attack just trying to keep it in, little man. Don't tell me what the fuck you going to do. Anyway, this is what he, he said. And that's how I had to come combat with him because I got tired of hearing that shit. And to me, it's kind of like a form of disrespect. And also, it's kind of like a form of humiliation because do you really, and ridicule, like you're ridiculing yourself, dude. If you really think you got a stroke and you got something packing down there, nigga, please, you don't got shit. And somebody need to tell you. So I felt like I was the one that needed to tell him. Do you know what he says after that? He texts me. Well, well, that's because I I couldn't I I was I was small like that because um, well, I had um, jerked off earlier that day. Just because you jerked off don't mean your dick is gonna stay little. Don't. I was like, then that's what I said to him. Please, please stop calling me. He stopped calling me for a minute. And his feelings wasn't really hurt that bad, so maybe I wasn't the only one that told him that. Maybe he had knew that he had a little one, you know what I'm saying? But he stopped calling me for a while, and then he would call once in the blue just to say, Hello, how are you doing? Just checking on you just to make sure you're okay, you know, because, you, you know, 
you new to the area. I wasn't that motherfucker new. And listen, little boy, you need to worry about yourself and make sure that you are okay because you look like something is missing down there. But anyway, I didn't say that to him. I just was like, you know, I'm doing good. How you doing? You know, all right, well, it's good to hear from you. And he finally stopped calling. But when dudes keep talking about sex with you, sex with you, and you trying to be nice and polite to them and tell them, listen, I'm not interested, but they're really not getting a the hint, then unfortunately you're going to have to go that route with them and let them know. Listen, you can't fuck, all right? That's the bottom line. If his dick is little, just let him know, you know what? What you did was not worth it. And I'm really not up for playing no games. I'm really not up for disappointment anymore in a sexual game. And I really don't want to have sex with you because it wasn't worth it. And it's sad. It's not sad. But unfortunately, we have to tell dudes when they can't fuck good. Because if you don't tell them, they will continuously think that they got game. And they packing. And you don't even really got to be packing too much. You got to be packing with something. You can't have a chapstick size dick, okay? If you have a chapstick size dick, meaning a chapstick, you know, a little chula chapstick, that shit is not going to work. It don't matter how good your strokes are, you're not feeling that. So your tongue game better be damn good. But anyway, as I was saying, it's unfortunate that when a man just starts talking about how he going to put it down and he going to put it on you and he going to do this and he going to do that. And then they feel like they really are putting it down and putting in that work and doing their thing. But you laying there like, are you serious right now? Wasting my motherfucking time? I was like, damn, did I really waste my time putting on my makeup to go out with this dude? Because he never came to my house. I'm not going to let you come to my house. If I don't know you, I'm not going to let you come to my house. If I'm dating you, I'm not going to let you come to my house. Because I don't bring people around my kids. And that's just me. So he never met my kids. He never came in my house. You know what I mean? I met him out and about. And we ended up, you know, going to the hotel. But... I was like, damn, I wasted my time putting on my makeup. I made, I wasted mascara, blush, concealer. Like, I wasted my time doing my wig to make it look nice for this little short dick. No fucking, non-fucking nigga. Like, with a hairy ass fucking back. And I was like, damn, you need to shave your back. Okay, and that's how non-filtered I am. So it's so it's unfortunate like when they're talking about their their dick game and they think that they can fuck and do all of this and they really can't and they keep on continuously going on like yeah you should give me the pussy yeah you need to give up the cookies to me and you like being real nice like no I you know no 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 but they still coming at you that's when you gotta kick it to them like look I don't want to fuck you I don't want to fuck you because you don't know how and I'm really not interested in you. And that's how you have to bring it to them. If you be nice about it, they think that you're just joking around and they're not taking you seriously. So sometimes, unfortunately, you won't have to let them know, listen, I'm not interested in you because your ass don't know how to hump. You can't lay it down. You ain't got nothing but a chapstick size one. Surprise, you can find that shit. I ain't interested in you and I'm not fucking with you. Please go somewhere. Little man, poof, be gone. So, Paige, you may just have to tell him, like, listen, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings, but your sex game is whack. And I know saying it like that is still, like, a hurt feeling thing. Like, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, who does that? But me. And I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one. And I've done it a qu couple of times. Like, yo, chill out. Or even with my boo. Like, Oh, you know, I get, are you serious right now? Did you just fall asleep after? What? That's how I be on him. Like, I, I tease him because he'll go to sleep after. But who ain't tired? But, you know what I'm saying? I'm always going to say something. It's always going to say something. However, if you keep coming at me with talking about you want to give it to me, you want to hit me and all of that stuff, you want to hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. And I'm being pleasantly nice to you and I'm telling you I'm not interested in that. But you still keep coming at me. 
then that means that you don't have not you don't have a respect for me because I already told you no and you keep coming back and you keep on insisting that we get it on and I already told you no but you keep on insisting so therefore you're not paying any attention to what I said you take me as a joke and you're disrespectful to me so now for what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell you about yourself and how your your dick game ain't game it's a motherfucking joke so sometimes you have to do that. And yeah, you don't want to mess up the friendship. However, the friendship might already be messed up because he came through with some bullshit and you ain't really trying to have it. The friendship may be already messed up. And if he's your child's godfather, you need to reanalyze that. Meaning, is he really your child's godfather? Because a lot of people take these titles on that they're really not committed to. Especially the godfather one. Oh, I'm going to be such and such baby godmother. What is it to really be somebody's godmother? Do they even do that still anymore these days? Like, I don't know. I have a, I don't have god godparents for none of my kids. And I'm fine with that because people are full of shit. And you ain't about to watch my kids or take care of my kids when I'm dead and gone. I got other kids that can do that for me. So I'm not, you know, just think about his title and what has he done for your child. Because what is he trying to do to you? He's trying to be your kid's godfather and your baby father too? Mm. So yes, Tina. Think that one over. Because girl, seriously, if it were me, I would really, like, have let him know already that your dick game is not really that strong and I need you to stop. Seriously, I need you to stop. <laughs> okay, so here on to the next one. Hey April, hope all is well with you. Just needed a bit of advice regarding my love life. I'm currently at a bit of crossroads and could someone and could use someone else's opinion on what I should do. All names have already been changed. My name is Maya. I'm 22 years old and I've been in a relationship for the last year. In the beginning, everything was wonderful, but that's how it always is during the honeymoon stage. But it seems like once the summer started, things went downhill fast. My boyfriend is 30 years old with four children, two babies, moms, a high school dropout, and, and an ex-con. But with that being said, he has managed to turn his life around and find a wonderful, good-paying job. Our biggest issue is that he just can't seem to leave the streets alone. He stays out all hours of the night while I'm at home alone. He has endless females blowing up his phone. Financially, he makes sure that the bills are paid and we always have what we need. But he just doesn't spend much time with me besides sliding into the bed at about 3 a.m. every night. Once in a blue moon, we have a date night which consists of a Netflix and chill. But never go anywhere outside of our home. Honestly, I'm just tired of feeling like a caged up bird. I love him and want things to work, but I don't want to be anybody's fool. Our lease is up at the end of October and really torn and I'm really torn between the idea of moving into another place together or moving on my own. April and the other divas, what should I do? Thanks, Maya. Well, Maya is twenty two, her boyfriend is thirty, and they had a good relationship. He has four kids with two different women and it seemed like for a while now, this nigga been sliding in the bed at three o'clock in the morning. He has a good paying job, but he's got all type of females blowing up his phone, sliding in the bed at 3 o'clock in the morning. Bitch is calling his phone. Like, I gotta take a drink for that. First of all, let me just say this. You ain't about to keep coming up in this motherfucker at 3 o'clock in the morning. And then you got bitches calling your goddamn phone. You sliding in the bed. Are you trying to fuck too? Fuck me, or have you already been doing that with the last bitch that you was with? Because I guarantee you that these bitches that is calling his phone are some scandalous assholes. Or they might not be any scandalous assholes. They may not know that he's got a girl that he lives with at home with, okay? He may, they may not know this. However, at 3 o'clock in the morning every day, and then when you guys have date night, y'all just sit and watch Netflix. That ain't no fucking date. That's being called cheap, Okay? It's being called cheap, bottom line. He not want to take you out nowhere because he don't want nobody seeing you in his company. Because he got other bitches on the side. You the main bitch, and then there's the other bitches that just are his side chicks. That really don't want too much and really don't care. Now, you sitting around waiting for 3 a.m. to hit when this nigga come in. And I'm pretty sure it's not a night job because you didn't state that. You said he be sliding in the door. Because he's running the streets, he's interested in the streets. Plus, he's a dropout and an ex-con. Not saying that that's a bad thing because he's put his life in, he's prioritized his life. However, he should go get his GED and stop running the streets. 
seems like he likes to have boy time every fucking night. And then when it's convenient to him, come home to you. And then when it's convenient to him, spend a little time with you, watch a Netflix movie, bang you out, and go the fuck to sleep. And then he's okay with who these bitches are calling his phone. Who are the bitches that's calling his phone in the first place is what I want to know. Second of all, if you think you can walk up in the house... 3.30 or 3 o'clock every night, then you must be out your rabbit ass mind to think that I'm some fucking idiot that is going to sit around and wait for you. Let me tell you something, Maya. Life, like I always say, is too short. You may love the dude now, and you love him because you're with him and because you don't want to be without him because you probably feel have a certain type of feeling for him. And you know what? It's natural because we all feel that way. I used to feel the same way about my ex-husband. Oh, I don't want to be without him. But now that I am, I'm fucking damn happy. Even if I wasn't with anyone, I was still happy. However, you're only settling because he's there. Now, your lease is up at the end of this month. Bitch, please, go get you a lease on your own. Move into somewhere without his ass and leave him and his baby mama drama and all of that shit alone. You 22 years old. You got life ahead of you. You don't have to be subjected to being tied down with some fucking 30-year-old loser who's got four kids, runs the streets, got bitches blowing up his phone, sliding into the bed at 3 o'clock in the morning. Please, his ass wouldn't get slid up into nothing. Okay, he'd be lucky if his key still works in the fucking keyhole by the time I finish with him. And see, here's the thing. My husband or my ex-husband used to try that shit with me. And you know what I did to him a couple of times? I changed the fucking locks. I sure did. I always had an extra lock sitting around that he never knew about. And I would fucking surely enough screw that sucker in and change the locks. You can't get the fuck in now, what? Okay? 3 o'clock in the morning? Girl, please. He's fucking with somebody. Alright? And I'm pretty sure you've already thought about that and i'm hoping that you thought about that like do you even bother to ask him what has he been doing till three in the morning is he selling drugs again or well you know what i don't even know if he ever sold drugs but i said again well is he selling drugs is he selling illegal shit what are you doing till three o'clock in the morning and you have to go to work too when do you get the time to rest? Oh, you get the time to rest when you're at the next bitch house. And you got to make sure that you get up and go home because if you don't, your girlfriend is going to question you. And what are you going to say? I was next. I was with the next bitch. Let me tell you something, Maya. Wake the fuck up. All right. Seriously, wake the fuck up. What's going to happen is you're going to realize that he's a real fucking jackass. And this is how it happens. First, they start not coming home at, until the wee hours of the morning, 3 o'clock. Then it starts getting sunlight out, so then it starts being 6 o'clock, then 8 o'clock. And then you don't see them for like 24 to 48 hours sometimes. Trust me on this, girlfriend. Trust me on this, okay? Because I had that same situation happen to me enough times. So once you allow them to keep coming in at 3 in the morning, 3 in the morning, 3 in the morning... All they're going to do is take it another step further. It'll be six. It'll be seven. Oh, I fell asleep at my boy's house because I was drinking too much. Oh, we fell asleep watching movies. Um, And then, you know, they got all kind of excuses of why they didn't wake up or why they didn't come in. It's an excuse after an excuse after an excuse. But the main reason for all of this bullshit and fuckery is because he's got some side chicks that he's fucking with. That you just don't know about. And he's thinking that you're stupid and naive. However, if you get another apartment with him, you are stupid and naive. Okay? So when your lease is up, Maya gets her own lease. And Derek the Jackass, or whatever you want to call him, he can move in with his friends that he's been hanging out with to 3 in the morning. Or he can get his own shit. And if you're not financially stable, Maya, you will be able to make it. Trust me. Because a lot of women stay with people or men because they feel like they can't handle shit on their own and they're not financially stable. However, sometimes in life shit is hard and we're not able to make it on our own so we stay with somebody that makes us so fucking miserable and we don't know what to do with ourselves. So we just stay with them because they're financially stable. I wouldn't give a shit if I had to sell oranges on the street. I'm not about to fucking sit around and let you humiliate me and ridicule me and fucking belittle me to my face. And I'm not going to lower my standards in life and standards in life and be with some asshole because he takes care of me. It doesn't work like that. 
your best bet is to get your own lease. He's a dog, and I'm pretty sure you see that by now. And if you haven't, I don't know where your eyes have been. Maybe you need to get them checked. But get off of your high horse. Go ahead and start looking for you a nice, price-efficient apartment and move on with your life. It's nice to be in a relationship, but he's 30 years old, and he's already set in his ways. And he likes to run the streets. And, yeah, being outside and running the streets sometimes is cool. However, there's a time and a place for everything. And it's not cool to keep coming in the house at 3 o'clock in the morning, and then you got bitches blowing up your phone. If the shoe was on the other foot, how would he feel about it? Would he like for you to treat him that way? Would he like it if you were roaming the streets? Would he like it if you had niggas calling your phone and things of that nature? He wouldn't like it. It reminds me so much of that song by Sierra, Like a Boy. That was my theme song where my husband cheated on me. He didn't like it. And I started treating him like shit. He didn't like it at all. And see, it, what's, good for the, what's good for the goose is also good for the gander. Okay? Remember that. It's an old saying. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. Because if it's good for your ass, it is good for me too. And don't feel some type of way. Don't act shady now or salty because I'm doing the same shit to you or I ain't trying to fuck with you. Don't act shady and salty because I ain't trying to fuck with you. Get over it. Bottom line, dude, get the fuck over it. So, Maya, move on and get your own lease because he's not worth it. He's not worth your time and your humiliation. And it seems like you've been humiliated long enough. And once the summertime hit, you said he started acting up? Girl, please, that's what all the bitches be outside with half their booty cheeks hanging out because they don't know how to put on pants that properly fit them. So they go outside and they want to talk to all the niggas out in the street because they ain't got shit else to do. They've been hibernated all winter long and then they use all their winter money to look good for the fucking two months of summer just so they can get some fucking dick. So, please, bye. Shoot him to the curb and move on and get yourself a nice little... Price efficient apartment for your own and move on with your life because he's not worth it. So, on that note, divas and divos, let our ladies know what you would think or what you would do. Give them your opinions, your thoughts, what have you, on each scenario if you would please. And as always, you can catch me right here on YouTube. I got new videos coming up that I've already edited, it, some that I didn't, but I will be. Um, and yes, yeah, so as always, make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, and if you have a real talk that you need to be, um, published, then go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com, and I'll be more than happy to respond to you, and as always, I love you guys, and I'll see you in my next video.